building a portfolio can be kind of a weird, ambiguous task. In this video, we're going to break down the keys to an effective data science or analytics portfolio. And I have an analytics portfolio heavy hitter, someone who is well established. So stay tuned. Hey guys, it's John David here with How to Get an Analytics Job. In this video, we're going through a podcast highlight with Michael Galarnik, who is a data scientist that is super well established, and his portfolio is just getting a massive amount of attention. This attention is just bringing so many opportunities to him on a daily and weekly basis. In this video, he's going to break down the keys to his success and what you should keep in mind when you're actually building out your analytics or data science portfolio. But before we get into the podcast highlight, I need to give a shout out to our sponsor, which is HQ Greensboro. I'm currently filming this on site at HQ Greensboro, and this has just been a wonderful place for me to not only meet other entrepreneurs, but also meet some partners and clients as well. So if you're ever in downtown Greensboro, you should definitely check out this spot. It's beautiful and it's also just a great environment to run your business. That being said, let's jump into the highlight. First of all, determine which job you want with the skills that you have. So before you even make a portfolio, you know, what are your skills? Do you know Tableau? Do you know Power BI? And figure out the ways to show that. If it's Tableau, you know, have a Tableau public. I don't know why you don't have one, you know, just public proof. It doesn't take that long to put a dashboard online, you know. So you're saying before you even start building, mm -hmm. do some proactive research to figure out, okay, I want this job and mm -hmm. it requires these three skills. So yeah. I need to go and figure out which one of those can I build a portfolio and to mm -hmm. show that I'm going to be able to at least complete the task, if not, you know, go above and beyond. Oh yeah, hundred percent. You know, if for the BI tool that you're using, for example, if it's your analytics, right? If there's no such thing as like a Tableau public for, I don't know, let's say some random BI tool, name one, you know, uh, Power BI. Let's say there's not something that you find equivalent. Well, you can always write a blog post about using Power BI. You know. Oh, that's an interesting idea. Like, make a gift. That's smart. Uh, your you know dashboard working you know or show some you know thing that you built you know and then have a link you know so someone can download the dashboard if they want you know it's just make an effort to find out what you need to do and then go about doing it the other thing you can do especially with a portfolio is we're always talking about like oh yeah you know table public or put things on github if you're a programmer or if you're you know use r code or python uh, by the way, totally have a GitHub. That's probably the second point. If you're doing any sort of programming language, have a GitHub with your projects on it, please. Like, it, it's nice to see that your actual code, it's one thing talking in an interview or, you know, just in general, but having code online, so much better. And then put a README with it too. You don't need to know what a README is for this podcast, <laughs> necessarily, but you know, README is basically just saying like, here's how to run the code or here's what I'm doing with this code, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, like what problem are you solving in theory, you know? Uh, and God, what was the other one? Oh, so there's also non-traditional ways of having portfolio. Some of this could be, you know, answering core questions about analytics. Uh, even their Stack Overflow versions for analytics, like, you know, how is this particular confidence interval working? Or answer people's questions, you know? Having your name out there really does help. You know, every single day I get people being like, oh yeah, like I saw your, you know, post on blah, 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 you know? Um, I also get people that say like, oh, I, I saw your post on, you know, towards data science or medium. And I thought it was really cool. You know, thank you so much. Are you interested in working for us? And my question usually is like, which blog post did you see? There's so many. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> or yeah. To a question. I'm like, was it on Quora? Was it Stack Overflow? Was it something I answered on Reddit? Some people actually have gotten jobs from answering analytics questions on Reddit. No joke. Um, so there's so many different platforms you can, you know, contribute back that, you know, people think better of you if they see your answer online, you know, and 
you know, you don't have to be a super expert to answer questions on, you know, simple things, you know, even just contributing back, you know, you can learn and make a portfolio even better simply because that you're learning from people's comments to your work, you know, mm, and these are the type important. of comments that you might get in like an interview, for example, you know, it's good. Yeah. Well, what you're doing there is you're almost um, crowdsourcing the actual portfolio. Exactly. So then you're, then you're getting, you're getting your assumptions tested and, you know, mm -hmm. you may have made some poor assumptions. Yeah. Some very poor assumptions. And <laughs> the beauty is people online are more than willing to point them out, you know? Wait, what is that law? There's a, uh, I saw this on Reddit um, where the best way to get an answer is to like say something wrong. Mm -hmm. And yeah, then, I mean, and then you're immediately going to have like all these people like, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. <laughs> but you learn so quickly, right? You know, I've, years and years ago, I, you know, I, sometimes I post blog posts and people are like, oh yeah, like, you know, you could also do this to solve a problem, right? Or something else you could look at. And I think better, I know things better for my work. I know things better for future interviews. Uh, I've aced interviews simply because, you know, my blogs have covered certain topics. You know, I get asked, you know, questions based on certain topics sometimes, you know, or answer things in Quora, you know, it's beautiful. It all comes back to you in the end, you know? That's, I like how you put that. Yeah. So I was actually listening to a podcast and they were, they were, they were mentioned the, the concept of more fatty, which is um, love fate. And mm -hmm. they were, they were talking like the broader context of that conversation was um, it's kind of like the serenity, serenity prayer of, I need to know what is within my sphere of influence and what is outside mm -hmm. of my sphere of influence. Yeah. And I need to have the wisdom mm -hmm. to know the, the two apart. Mm -hmm. um, what are, what are the most impactful things that someone can do to kind of get themselves out there or like build a portfolio that like really resonates? Well, I think the, the biggest problem with people is first of all, just getting out there. You know, you don't have to have a, a life changing contribution, you know, mm -hmm. to Tableau public or a blog post, you know, just try writing something and publish it or try posting something on Tableau public and then sharing it on Reddit or, you know, Cora asking for feedback or some platform, uh, because that's the way to start growing. And the hardest thing is just to start really. Yeah. Zero to one. That is the, and then as you started your thing. podcast, I'm sure you kind of felt the same thing. The hardest thing was to start, right? <sighs> yeah. Because I, 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 I'm still struggling a little bit with imposter syndrome because mm -hmm. I've only been in this space for three years. Well, so I've actually had someone challenge that kind of assumption, speaking, mm -hmm. you know, kind of mentally. Um, I tell people that I've, I, I've had my analytics consulting agency for three years, but I mm -hmm. studied analytics in my MBA for four, two years before that. Mm -hmm. So I'm technically five years into my journey. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know. Actually, this is a good topic for you to, to answer since you're kind of in that position. Mm -hmm. So this is a debate that me and Elizabeth, my uh, podcast co-host had. Um, and she, speaking of getting out there, this mm -hmm. was the first criticism she ever got. Mm -hmm. And it kind of ate her up a little bit. Like uh -huh. someone, someone was like, I work at Google. If um, someone interviewed for us and said they have five years of experience and they included their education, I would just laugh mm -hmm. them out the door. I mean, mm -hmm. people can be rough. <laughs> people can be rough, but you do learn from, you know, good and bad criticism. You know, I had a, a YouTube video, which I totally could share some of the comments. I mean, it was on principal component analysis. And people were like, you say, okay, way too much. I said, okay, there's no <laughs> contextual reason, you know? But you know what? I've learned my LinkedIn learning, my LinkedIn learning course. You know, I do not say, okay, 27 times, you know? This right. Point. It was and just a filler word. Yeah. But, you know, you, you do learn by, you know, trial through fire in some ways, right? And, you know, but you know what? That, the blog post that accompanies that video has gone, you know, 500,000 views. Wow. So, you know, life hurts, you know, <laughs> very public shaming in some ways. So but, what you're saying is that it's all okay? It, it's all okay because you learn and you get better, you know? And these are things that people would point out in a more uh, dire situation, like an interview, right? Mm -hmm. If you don't speak well in an interview versus just some random YouTube video, you're okay, you know? Because 
difference between you know a bad YouTube video versus a bad interview is could be a job, you know. Yeah, I actually just went back. Um, I just applied for Vistage, which is um, it's basically like a public speaking engagement where you you go and you talk to a group of um, C-suite executives, and they it's almost like a mastermind group. And I, I and I was trying to dig up a good video to send them. Um, to, to like show that I can speak well and I went all the way back to my first YouTube video <laughs> and it was terrible I was so flat and I was pausing but it wasn't like one of those good pregnant pauses where you're like like building up the anticipation yeah. it was just like oh that sounds and feels weird it was like making my skin crawl uh-huh but I mean I you have you kind of ha- you have to crawl before you can walk before you can run you know you just gotta, exactly. you just gotta get out there portfolios are yeah and portfolios and like for analytics are very iterative right it's not like when you publish a dashboard to tablet public you can't you know update it or you know whatnot um you can always make things better and you can always be growing you know 